Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice Apex. Okay, well, I just decided to start with this image to sort of show you on with this map that we barely sort of scratched the surface. Well, we've dug in fairly deep. But in a World War II sense, we're doing fairly well. For June, first year, pushing this deep. Yes, the Germans got to the outskirts of Moscow, probably right about to here before having to be thrown back. That was after June. And they didn't have any of this. Now, of course, we got this through naval invasions. Thinking right now. I don't know. Okay, I guess this is time for it. Another little talk here. No, what? Well, it shouldn't be long. Um, but I know I mentioned this before in some of the series. Excuse me. Okay. Um, there's different mindsets of people and the way they look at things. And I, I know you're going. Well, of course there is. No, I'm, but I'm talking about. Um, large groups of people and it's one thing that um, I hear I think coming out of some um, Russians and definitely um, out of the Chinese um, I think the Russians maybe the translation would be peoples of the sea and um, Chinese sea peoples now it's probably you know this depends on how you translate it um, would be the same thing and Germans really aren't that they're not peoples of the sea and it has nothing to do with race or any of that BS um, this is culture and, and the way people view things well, you're just sitting there and I've been waiting for you to get fuel to then occupy there, but since you're not getting fuel, let's head you east. But so, so I'm thinking about why didn't they do naval invasions as a planned, you know, pre-planned, pre-set up operation. And you go, oh, well, they didn't have any ships or whatever in the Black Sea. Oh. You just get some there, but and the French, I don't know. They they definitely have a significant naval tradition, unlike the Germans. Um, but even them, to some degree, and I guess it's just it's that the Anglo culture comes from here. An island, actually multiple islands, which is part of it. Some are, you know, Isle of Man, fairly small. Don't know why it's called Douglas. Anybody know why they call that Douglas? Yeah, I think there may be, I don't know, a town or something, but that'd be Man. Call that Man or Isle of Man, but Man would be just one. Um, and of course, there's Sky up here though. Again, Storn um, away is a town up here. Porti is a town. Not no, that's the, this is Sky. What am I saying? This is Sky. Porti. This is Sky. This is the um, Lewis, I think. Um, God, I should know that better. Um, you maybe? I don't know. But um. Campbelltown is just one small town here. Oh, whatever. Um, so the Anglo culture comes from here, which is my culture. I'm entirely of that culture. Now, 
I come from the version that comes from down over here, Los Angeles. But still, it's that culture. And we have spread across the continent. And these guys spread across the northern part of the same continent. But we have that the same culture. And the same culture comes, or, you know, as these people here had some sort of indigenous outback rebellion, it looks like. And these people here. Um, and it's not just... Excuse me. People traveled by sea to get to their island or colony or whatever they're somewhere across the ocean. But we think in terms of the sea. And we're the sea peoples. Napoleon very much um, came to the conclusion that wherever you could float something, that is where the British will be and the British will be victorious. And ultimately he was right. Not that they didn't lose some battles in the Napoleonic era of the, you know, sea. And they definitely had to withdraw, um, had to flee, had to get out. But it, in a way that was a victory is that they were masters of the sea. And if you were able to mount enough um, opposition to them, they just go somewhere else and... <coughs> wait until they broke up and then start coming back. Um, so maybe it's just that the Germans didn't think in them. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not talking so well at the moment. Um, didn't think in terms of the sea as um, A path to victory but as a barrier because yes they did come are they did they come across Cratch here no you know, I know they came around I know they withdrew through withdrew across here sorry I don't remember that detail um just I'm, I'm saying as a major advance thrust So, so they may have just seen every every bit of ocean as, as a as a barrier to overcome, as opposed to hey, this is a good way to advance because partially it's the game mechanics, but partially it's also my understanding of the way the world works. Is hey, can I supply by the sea? Yes, there we go. Then I want to supply here, and we'll get more supplies because it's easier to move things by the sea than it is to move things by the land. And this can be seen very much in the Allies, and it's frankly British and American, operation against Italy. This just looked to us like one big juicy target. Um, you know, we would get North Africa, then, well, we'd get um, Sicily, and we can move into Italy, and then, well, once things getting tough in Italy, we just keep crossing lines. Where the Germans kept building defensive lines, you know, to, you know, um, you know, the Gustav line and whatever they, they were built. Sorry, I'm blanking on them. I think there was even a Hitler line. But, um, so, sorry about this. Um, and so that, they, you know, because... We're going to hold out here. And, and where's Anzio? We have a, yeah, Anzio here. Um, we're going to hold out down here. And then we'll, we just invade an Anzio. There we go. You, you got a line at Monte Cassino here? Great. Short. Spiffy. Neat. Well built. Cool. Well, we'll just go around it. Oh, you're building another? Well, we'll just go around it. No. What's the point of def building a defensive line anywhere in Italy? And I got to ask. And we got some really well-informed people here watching this channel. I'm really pleased by that. What is the point of building a, you know, having um, 
uh, Kesselring build defensive lines in Italy? Just, just were you getting um, oil plant oil coming out of Italy? Were you getting production out of Italy? Oh, sure, I know about that. They kept some of the very late versions of the riveted tanks. I forget exact models of them, um, M40s or whatever, um, that they were continuing production for the German use. And more than just simply, oh, we, we had 10 half completed, we'll finish them out. No, they continued the production, but for the German war effort, they never really were able to do that. So what's the point of building defensive lines? Like, it's... Yeah, it'll slow up a, a, um, a patent-like um, charge of tanks up Italy. Absolutely. But... It, I'm just thinking of the all the wasted effort when we just land somewhere else and go around them and go around them. And they kept doing it even after the, the, the landings. Now, you can say, oh, well, that was Madman Hitler. Okay, but he comes out of the tradition. And yes, Hitler is not a great strategic thinker. I'm, I'm sorry if anybody really has grand opinion. Hitler knew German politics. I am very impressed with Hitler's ability to um, be an outsider and take over Germany politically. That is a master um, political leader, okay? That doesn't mean that he understands more than the basics of combat, you know? He was a corporal in World War I and sort of has a, a military understanding. But that doesn't mean you're a strategic thinker. Where I... Yeah, I've had a little bit of military training, but I've never been in the proper military. Um, just in the U.S. and ROTC in college. But So I have some idea, but I am not um, skilled or with the right skill set or the right training or whatever to command a company or battalion. I, you know, I've gone through some of the exercises on how to do command a company in my training, but I've never actually done it. I've never been a platoon commander that watched my company commander do it to then move into his his um, position one day. I make no claims on that. That's why I call myself, and I also sort of call you generically, though. Of course, we may. Ha I'd love to have a real general watching this channel, an armchair general, and so you know that sort of makes me, in my mind, a um, a military thinker. Because sometimes you can have, um, uh, like, I said, not, oh, um, Clark, um, oh, what was his first name? I don't know. Clark, I, if I remember. He was, um, one of the naval thinkers that, um, influenced, um, Nelson and some of the others in how to break the line and, um, win very big naval but a victory but he was not even a sea captain and which um supposedly before his thoughts became widely accepted it was what does this guy know you know all the the british naval officers who wanted to the formalized lines of battle and um, do it the traditional ways well yeah they know how to be a sea captain much better but they weren't a thinker like um, Clark was <clears throat> and some some of the younger um, up right coming up people read his work and um, sort of got the Nelson touch if you will and how to do that and it sort of comes off of his work so that's sort of how I look at myself as a you know a strategic thinker that doesn't mean I can effectively lead a battalion in, in combat, but I think I can sit back on this. So, now, does that mean I'm saying that it was stupid to try to defend the Italian peninsula? No, actually not. And does that mean that 
when you have time, you shouldn't prepare a defensive line? Yeah, you should. You know, it's called digging in, you know. But the fortified lines that they were building and the amount of um, effort <coughs> that they were putting into it, which some of it was local Italian labor that might not be um, distracting from other endeavors. But enough of it was because they were taking panther turrets. I don't know. How do you get a lot of extra panther turrets? Is, is there, you know, again, I'm not an, don't, don't know where they somehow not making enough holes and had a lot of extra turrets around, but they were taking panther turrets and embedding them in concrete. And a lot of it was, I think, is just that they were, you know, low profile and hard to hit and rather thought to be rather effective bunkers, better than just parking a panther there. But you're making a fixed fortification that can be bypassed. And once bypassed, it can not only not be no longer useful, it can actually become dangerous in that um, your troops that are holding that fixed fortification, as well as the supplies built up behind it and other elements are actually lost because they are surrounded and cut off. Where if Kesselring had done a, um, and yes, you can get back to Hitler and his hold the line mentality that definitely a bunch of other German military thinkers at the time were not wedded to. But to the idea that, oh, they're starting to turn our lines. Well, we're, you know, withdrawing back and keep everything. Yes. And if you're sitting there for more than, I don't know, three or four hours, you're, you're having your infantry dig, dig slit trenches to, to defend yourself. And then you may be getting up eight hours later, you know, and marching to another location, just, you know, wherever you go dig in, but keep a mobile defense, you know, as opposed to just giving up territory. I, I understand the idea that you're not just like gonna, um, oops, Italy's surrendered. The Americans are coming up the peninsula. Let's let everyone run away. I get that point. No, the, the, but there is, um, reasons to, uh, to consider that. Again, I, it's not maybe the, the best one, best choice, but I get that. But the idea that you're going to build defense. Now, it's different. Maginot and West Wall, that's different because that is, um, um, a line that, well, obviously you can turn it up here, but, you know, it's, it's a line across the land that isn't going to be turned by a naval invasion, you know, unless you consider landing up here, somehow turning it. And it could be, but, um, and the Atlantic Wall, it has a um, level of completeness to it, shall we say. And um, it's, again, not easily turned, like we're looking here. And this is, I'm getting, trying to get at the mindset between um, the use of this, the, the peoples of the land and the peoples of the sea. And why they think the way they do. And I, I, I think this is key to understanding. And if you, again, if you're, I know a few of you particularly like my, um, whether they're rants, because sometimes they are rants, or whether they're monologues like this. And I definitely like that you comment because I sort of get to know you as an audience. So, um, you know, not just on this, but on whatever. But let's try, and part of what I do with, um, reading and studying and playing war games is try to understand history. And I think it's key to understanding history and why the Anglo culture is the dominant culture on the planet. It is not the culture of the most pe uh, of the, 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 the culture that um, most of the people follow on the planet or even the culture, the largest populous culture on the planet. I think that the what Han Chinese culture um, 
And notice I didn't say Chinese, I said Han Chinese. Please understand that. Um, I think it's the, the largest single population culture, which and larger than the Anglo culture. And when you look at India, there's multiple cultures there. I mean, we can talk in vague general sense about um, Indian culture. And there are overall things, but obviously compared to what we see here now, they've split it off into one Muslim batch over here, another Muslim batch over here, and both of those Muslim batches are different cultures of Muslims, but they're different Muslim cultures than Arab Muslim cultures. So, um, and there had been a huge intermixing of Muslims in greater India, not just in um, single culture pockets. So, there's lots of Indians, and but there's and there's lots of people that speak that don't speak Hindi in India, and um, so. But you can look at the um, Indian Army marching styles. They're they're British, okay. They like bagpipes. Yes, there is some sort of Eastern bagpipe, but they all play today. You know, it goes back to some ancient times because the bagpipe is a very very ancient. Um, uh, musical instrument, but um, the bagpipes that um, the Indian Army play are Scottish Highland bagpipes. They are specifically Scottish Highland bagpipes because that became a thing. Because you can look there, are, there are Irish pipes and there, are, there are parlor pipes, which are parlor pipes are meant to be played in a, in a house in a parlor. So they're not these big screeching Highland bagpipes that are you can play them inside, but sort of uncomfortably loud but quieter smaller you know so if you look at all the different types of traditional bagpipes in and around Britain there there are different types and some of them are very different than others but um, they specifically have their war music their martial music martial of course as you know means military their military music and, and I'm not saying they don't also have an Indian military music but they use Scottish, which I'm lumping the the sort of Anglo-Celtic world together here in this in this um, talk. That um, that that specifically um, Scottish martial music in India. So it's dom British military um, culture dominates the Indian. Um, military to this day same with bangladesh the same with pakistan that's why i talk about i don't want this to go on too much longer but that's why i talk about the dominant culture it isn't just because the u.s and britain has nuclear weapons or russia isn't a populous and important um country it has nothing to do with that it has um to do with the success of the culture Okay, and just because of what's sort of been going on, and this will be a while before this is released, but we're seeing a bit of neo-Nazi resurgent in the, in the U.S., but trust me, everybody out there in the world, it's a, you know, nationwide it's less than 10,000 people that are really active or something, you know, and for the almost what 300 million people in america it's really nothing okay so don't don't look at that and i so i think what i do here and sometimes in other games so we've gotten iraq and um, iran as part of our axis and we've invaded from the south which is definitely what Rommel was considering to do with his push through here into Russia. So they were definitely thinking in those terms coming this way. But I made preparations <clears throat> partly by being able to drop completed ships in here. But Italy had transports 
The Axis were sitting on the Italian army on the Turkish border with enough eh, pressure, shall we say, to give cover to the, um, the Turks to go. We had to let them through or they would have invaded us kind of thing. And with that, you could have moved enough shipping into Romania before the invasion, I think, <clears throat> to carry out successful invasions over here. And so that, we would probably be just to here by now, but also realize all of the forces that I dropped into here initially would have been marching out through here. So we might have gotten a bit farther already coming through this way. So, and so this is just part of my, um, shall we say, attempts to understand um, culture, history, society, why things have happened the way they have. The choices that have been made and things like that. And I think are important to try to do. And it's part of why I'm fascinated by, whether it's Hearts of Iron or some other um, game. Like this, because it allows me to And quite honestly, I sort of really wish I had a bit more time to play things like um, EU and um, CK a bit more. I think it might draw in a, another crowd into the um, to the channel. But I'm um, far from sure of that. I keep doing things and playing other games that, how shall I put this, um, get an audience from, from, <clears throat> from you all. But they don't seem to bring in their, their own audience, shall we say. So, which is disappointing to me. And yeah, I know I'm not a famous gamer, and I'm not some uber star of, like, um, play the game better than anybody else, or anything like that, that Oh, well, I've got Astrid now. Will we be able to take it back? We're completely cutting ourselves. Well, I'm attacking us. You retreat out. Your main, your main task is just to mess with them up there. Oh good, finally taking out the up there. And now we've lost that. Okay, well, they've retreated onto us, which is good. Onto these other units here now. And this is light armor. We're going to hit down here. We're going to. Let's see about how many of side of the bottom here. Uh oh. Hmm. 
we'll go back and get, get out of the fire island. We just lost the sub, but me. The thing, but no big deal. Soviet. Maybe they're heading out through there. Yeah, that's probably what they're doing. They're probably heading out to here. Yeah. Gibraltar. Pillars of Her Her Hercules. Let's put you guys out here. Since you're down there, even if they come that way, you can intercept them. And as people who have watched for some time know, I really try to understand why things are done the way they're done. And it's not just some leader sitting in some office or battle command tent or whatever it might be. No, he's trying to escape. Okay, well, we're going to attack. Attack. And these guys are going to support that attack. I want to close this off. Between. Yeah, they've got a lot of divisions. Not that that's not correct in a historical sense. Looks like these guys can... Oh, there's too much of this as well. Yeah, I wish all that would sort of show up as you know, a little bit more zoomed in. Okay, well, another headquarters, German Mobile, so we're going to send these guys this way. Okay, then we're going to head back, hopefully at a good rate of movement. Okay, well, can we get all of them on board? Really? Well, Hungarian mountain troops, head to the mountains.
I'm having to think that it might be a good idea that we may be swamped down there. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I think it's time to Guns? Yes, good. Might as well have you involved. And some foreign army attacks as well. Guys are heading to there. So if we can head right now, walking like that. Oh, hey, you joined the attack here. So these guys are trying to break out that way. Let's try to break in a bit. Just to mess with them. We've got lots and lots of troops, but we're just trying to mess with them a bit. Okay, we are so dealing with that BS down there. Supplying fuel up there and very important, but I think we need to make sure that gets some supply. That is sort of worth cutting it. Let's head back down. That would be nice. Yeah, I think that's best. We're going to reconnect up here soon, I think, I hope. Um, Well, 
so we can't retreat that way. We kept them from moving anywhere else. Yeah, how are we going out here? Did we really make it? No, they're still crawling back. Good thing they don't see us or something. movement moves slowly down here. Okay, well, this division, we want to come that way. Get these guys off. Okay, well, battle's over now. Anti personnel defenses on tanks, yay. Um, good. Just yeah, just marginally lowered for some reason. And we have won here, and I'm gonna occupy that. Good. Lost here, but they're, they're retreating back there. Probably wouldn't have lost if they had organization at the start of it. But I was being awfully aggressive. Uh oh. Uh oh. Partisan rebellion uprising. Uh oh. Um, Okay, let's first deal with that I guess. Okay, what are we looking at? The one here.
fly to here. Thinking needs to continue to push forward. We're getting healthier by the moment. Almost sealed that off, which is good. Okay, well, okay, so we've already occupied that place, but you keep moving up here. Example. Oh, they're going to be forced to retreat. Damn, they're not getting organized. When can we get 12 hours? Less than 12 hours, you strength it down.
No, no, you, you actually attack. They're gonna continue on to there, hopefully. There. That way. Okay, well, you run back. You're just a motorcycle unit, but you're making them dance. Did do is open up the corridor even if just briefly. Here for supplies. Here I'm hoping to open a little more permanently. If I don't kill him. He's just gonna keep messing with me here. Fort So we've got Portuguese guys up here to the point. I think we'll do okay there.
Good. Kept that corridor open. That feels good. We support the attack. We've got an engine up there. I think that may be some of the key. Cool thing the way they did it, I thought. Not as cool as hello, hello, but still cool. Okay, um, I'm checking in there. We're coming up to support that attack. Transports get to Berlin. Yes, apparently so. Let's load them into them. Well, these are the wrong transports. Well, no, those are the right ones, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that worked. Okay, yeah, let's see. Fly them down to here. See, you based uh, Le Mesos. We're going to take Lafcosia back from the partisans, the paratroopers. You have fuel, what you do. Don't know why you're waiting for fuel there. support this attack. I'm using the rockets there to hopefully better besiege the city. Moscow is surrounded. You support that attack as well. I'm hoping by this time for these guys to move up. More and more strength. Put that attack for going through the swamp though.
forever it's doing this. Problems, of course. Oh, Bura's armored train. Bura. Ah, oh, we're taking on Bura. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Ah, I love that. That's great. Good going, Von Thoma. That's kind of group 88. Ah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, well. Here. Let's do that. Ah, we've got more forces here. Okay, well. Can we all hit? Yeah, let's get on board. Okay. And you on board. And let's put you on board. Now we're going to go to Azal. Transport there. And This is just sort of in case things are collapsing too much up here. We'll be able to form some sort of defensive line in the mountains, I hope. But we have all of these guys coming here. Almost a good division of the flight. Have Moscow surrounded. And it looks like I'm mean, no way am I saying it possible to retake the um, surrounding areas, but I don't think that's likely.
Try to break out the hole. But now we've cut off all supply to any of these um, pockets or ports or whatever um, that may exist, including to here, unless they're flying in air air supply, which I don't think they are. Okay, we got the extra time. That's just five extra points, and that's a lot. Just to have you move instead of attack the move. Fighter pilot training, good. I think we're going to take this opportunity to end this episode. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos. I really do appreciate that. And of course, if you would post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, love hearing from you. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.